Hey everyone, today I want to talk about an anthropological study. Now I don't often talk about anthropology, but it is considered a subfield or a partial subfield of biology. I mean, anthropology is really a mixture of biology and history, geography, paleontology, you know, all these fields. And so the study that I want to talk about today examined the bodies of several people who were dumped into a mass grave sometime in the early Neolithic period, around 5,000 years ago. The authors begin their paper by talking about the migration of peoples from the Mesopotamian area northwards into eastern and central Europe, and how as they migrated and they settled various lands and regions, they transformed their landscape through forest clearing, agriculture, and the development of these large, static, urban settlements. These people are described in the literature as the linear band keramic culture, which literally translates to a Neolithic culture that produces ceramic with linear banding marks. From here on out, I'll follow the author's example and refer to the linear band keramic culture as the LBK. The authors go on to discuss the cultural changes that would have followed these various migrant groups and the various funeral rites that they had, as evidenced by a plethora of uncovered graves examined in previous studies. Then they start talking about archaeological sites in Germany, and this is where stuff starts getting pretty intense. At these sites, they found mass graves, where the human bodies, quote, were subjected to complex post-mortem manipulation and disarticulation before being deposited in mixed assemblages with selected animal bones and various artifacts. The highly intense manipulation of corpses and possible ritualistic cannibalism practiced at Herxheim represent behaviors that are still difficult to unravel, but knowledge about them has affected the interpretation of other sites that have long been considered as evidence for LBK warfare, and, more specifically, massacres, unquote. They explain that signs of funeral rites present in normal graves aren't present in the mass graves where suspected massacres took place. Many of these massacre sites included, quote, balanced numbers of children and adults of both sexes. The high percentage of subadults among the massacre victims and their burial within settlement areas are both strongly indicative of surprise attacks on villages, a practice encountered among many different societies, unquote. With this background established, the authors introduced the site of their study, Halberstadt, Germany. Here, there's a burial site with, quote, the skeletal remains of irregularly deposited and severely traumatized individuals, unquote. These bodies were basically unceremoniously thrown into a pit after having been mutilated and then executed, which is quite unlike the formalized, arranged, and careful funeral rites that are given to non-invaders, you know, to close friends and family and other village members. I forgot to mention that these bodies were those of potential invaders, described as, quote, non-locals originating from outside the regular marriage networks and or recruitment areas of the Halberstadt LBK community. All of these bodies, uh, about nine of them in total, were male and adults between the ages of 25 and 40, with the exception of one possible female who could be 21 to 26 years old at the time of her death, and one possible male who could have been as young as 16, which would have been considered an adult in Neolithic societies. The authors point out that this virtually all-adult, all-male group differs from other bodies found in other sites, which are typically representative of entire communities, you know, with men, women, and children. Where that suggests a village was attacked and destroyed, the bodies in this new find are probably the attackers. However, they faced resistance from the village that they were attacking, and they were summarily captured, tortured, and then executed via, quote, blunt force cranial injuries, unquote. So what basically happened was uh, some of these outgroup people came in and tried to attack a particular village, and the villagers fought back and maybe fought them off and captured some of them, and then they held down the attackers and caved in the back of their skulls with rocks or some kind of crafted weapon. Ultimately, this data, the researchers say, strongly suggests that warfare and collective violence was, quote, a major societal issue, at least for later LBK populations, unquote. They explain that political power at the time would have been decentralized and based on families and clans 
maybe spread out across a few villages. But that a sharp increase in uncovered graves dated to around 5,000 years ago suggests that this period saw the emergence of social stressors among the LBK. They argue, quote, Climate-induced drops in agricultural production, the mounting consequences of inherited land claims to agricultural land, and increasing hierarchical differentiation are among the likely factors for furthering the rise of social tensions, and, ultimately, of lethal conflicts between independently acting groups, unquote. So to summarize all of this, they basically found the unmarked mass grave of a bunch of attackers. They were from out of the area, and they participated in an attack on a village, which was pretty common at the time, and it usually resulted in many dead men, women, and children. But these attackers all had tightly clustered skull fractures to the same parts of their skulls, which suggests that they were deliberately executed after failing in their assault on the village. The bodies were dumped into a shallow grave, and possibly not even fully buried. The evidence suggests that small animals came and gnawed away at the exposed fingers and toes, and that's how they laid for 5,000 years. The authors conclude their paper by saying, quote, While the massacre sites of Talheim, Asparn, and Kilianstaten show that warfare and the destruction of whole communities were indeed part of early Neolithic life, the mass grave of Halberstadt now elucidates further aspects of violent actions and reactions during the time of the first farming culture of the early Neolithic Central Europe." Unquote. You know, I really like these studies that tell us more about our history, where we came from, and what we did, but they simultaneously make me very, very happy that I live in the 21st century, where I'm at a very low risk of having pillagers come in and slaughter everyone in my village. I'm very, very happy that we have modern food production and distribution so that a bad crop season doesn't force me to gang up and go murder everybody in a nearby village so that we can steal their food. But it does make me wonder what archaeologists of the future will think about us today, with our funerals where we put bodies in big wooden boxes and where our bones reveal a lifestyle defined not by hunger and combat with Neolithic weapons, but a lifestyle defined by obesity and exposure to strange, artificially produced chemicals.